If you've never heard of an IP rating, then you're probably not particularly concerned about going swimming with your phone, but it's not a bad idea to start paying attention to this number since more and more manufacturers are building phones that are resistant to moisture damage. Next to cracked screens, this is one of the most common types of damage that we tend to see in phone repair shops. In fact, it's so common that we'll often open up a phone for something simple like replacing a battery and find evidence of moisture on the internal components. Now this moisture will turn the stickers on the inside of the phone from white to red or pink as soon as they get wet. So for all practical purposes at this point, your manufacturer's warranty is voided. So what is an IP rating? Well, IP stands for ingress protection, which means how good your device is at keeping foreign materials out. The term international protection is sometimes substituted since the standard is based on benchmarks developed by the European Committee for Electrotechnical Standardization, or ECETS, and is used worldwide. The first number refers to dust or solid materials, and the second number is water, pure water. Uh, not salt water, chlorinated water, coffee or soda, but plain old H2O. Now, if there's an X following the letters instead of a numerical digit, that means that there is no dust resistance rating indication. So it acts as a placeholder of sorts. If there's a third number, it indicates protection against mechanical impacts, but you don't usually see this with phones since it's no longer required by the ECETS. That explains part of the popularity of drop test videos, although many of those are prone to variance based on environmental factors like surface density, distance from impact, and the angle at which the device strikes that surface. There are also letters corresponding with different tests like high voltage, underwater movement, and weather conditions, but for now we'll just concern ourselves with dust and water since you're unlikely to see these letters again when it comes to phones. Let's look at an example. A phone with an IP45 rating would be protected from solid objects greater than one millimeter indicated by the four following IP. This includes most wires, slender screws, large ants, etc. Wait, ants? The five means that the device is protected against water jets from any direction. To be more precise, with a test duration of one minute per square meter for at least three minutes, using a water volume of 12.5 liters per minute at a pressure of 30 kPa or kilopascals at a distance of three meters. Got all that? With the range of IP00 all the way up to IP69K, your phone may be completely unprotected or highly resistant to dust and water. More than likely, it falls somewhere in between those two extremes. You can find links in the video description for complete explanations of each combination of the two numbers. The iPhone 7 has an IP67 rating, while the Galaxy S7 is an IP68. So what's the difference? The 6 indicates that both phones are completely protected from dust getting inside of them, while the 7 means that the iPhone can be submerged up to 1 meter underwater for 30 minutes. Although, for some reason, Apple isn't really making a big deal about its IP rating in the way of its advertising. And also, if your iPhone 7 happens to get wet on the inside, it will not be covered by the manufacturer's warranty. The 8 used with the Galaxy S7 typically means that it can be submerged up to 3 meters, although this number may vary along with the duration of the test as this is typically specified by the manufacturer. So there's no one single um, specification to meet here, and in the case of the S7, they state that it is water resistant in up to 5 feet of water for up to 30 minutes, rinse residue, and dry after wet. Okay, fair enough, but this. Bring on the spills, splashes, and dunks. Now you won't need to put your phone in a bowl of rice because of a little water. All right from their website, please stop telling people that rice cures wet phones. You're creating way more problems than you solve with that advice. By the way, the S7 Active actually failed the Consumer Reports water resistant test. Now this is the one that Lil Wayne pours champagne over just because I guess that's what he does for entertainment. Japan has an exclusive 5.2 inch version of the LG V20 called the V34, which is water resistant as opposed to the V20, which is not. And this is the case with many phones in Japan. In fact, as of 2014, 90 to 95% of mobile phones in Japan are supposed to be waterproof. The reason given, because young Japanese women are so fond of their phones that they use them in the shower. And then they show a picture of a girl in a bathtub, not a shower. I can't verify this as I don't know any girls from Japan, so comment if you use your phone in the shower, especially if you're from Japan. Manufacturers sometimes exaggerate what their products can do either through statements or implications, like commercials showing people intentionally getting their phones wet, 
Uh, extreme temperatures, shock from impact, and of course cracks on the surface will compromise the ingress protection that your phone has when it's brand new. Also, once something like this little rubber seal at the bottom breaks off or becomes brittle, well, taking pictures underwater would be a bad idea. At the top end of the chart, we had the Sonim or Sonim XP, and no, this is not an endorsement of their product as I have only seen pictures of it so far. And while most people are unlikely to need something so robust, not to mention having a relatively small display, this beast has an IP69 rating, meaning that it is fully submersible in fresh and salt water at a depth of six and a half feet for up to 30 minutes. By the way, salt water will destroy the inside of your phone very fast, so you absolutely never want salt water getting inside. It's not only corrosive, but it's also conductive, so you end up with electricity going into places where it's not supposed to be. The highest IP rating is IP69K. The K indicates pressurized water being used for testing. According to centralcarolinascale.com, IP69K means the device is protected against water during high pressure temperature cleaning. So water that is sprayed against the housing in every direction at very high pressure will not cause damage. The water intrusion tests themselves are done by placing the product on a turntable with a rotational speed of about five revolutions per minute. The product is then sprayed at close range at a rate of approximately four gallons per minute with water pressure of between 1160 and 1450 pounds per square inch at a temperature of 176 degrees Fahrenheit. The nozzle from which the water is sprayed is held between four and six inches from the product at a variety of angles. Following this rigorous testing procedure, the product is deemed as having successfully achieved the rating if it completely resists water ingress. While most consumers won't be taking their phone through a high pressure car wash, there are some industries that expose their equipment to extreme conditions. Back in 1990, the International Organization for Standardization issued a standard for water resistant watches. This standard also prohibits the term waterproof from being used with watches since it's not really possible to make a watch 100% impervious to liquid at extreme depths. Well, at least not one that would be practical to wear because the weight of water creates increasing amounts of pressure the deeper you go. But you can still call food sugar-free as long as it has less than 0.5 grams of sugar per serving. So the other catch to rating the phone's water tightness, if you want to call it that, is the way that submergence is performed in a laboratory setting. As far as we know, the phone is placed in still water so that nothing flows against it and the pressure from the water is evenly distributed. This would not be the same as, let's say, running your phone through a washing machine by accident or leaving it partially submerged so that the water is pushing against one area while any leaks in the phone would allow equalization so that the air could escape, making ingression more probable. I will be testing out some waterproof or water resistant products in the future, so if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and remember to subscribe while you're here. Thanks for watching.